also have my good friend, Matt Halpern. How you doing, Matt? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. Are you excited to be here? I'm First time. so excited. First time live on ESGI. First time. Are you nervous at all? A little bit. A little bit? What, little what, bit. what, what, what are you so nervous about? Um, that. <laughs> the, all, <laughs> just the lights and the cameras and the people it's watching. That's okay. It's all good. It's all good. So you, ha you presented today. Presented how did today. that go? It was awesome. You presented about project-based learning project -based with learning, Lori Elliott. Yep, all day, um, and I'm presenting tomorrow and Wednesday as well. Awesome. So, Matt, I know you love to dance. So before I we do. get into a little bit about your session, I want to play a game, okay? Yeah. Okay. So I have some dance moves, and uh, I want you to do the dance moves, okay? All right. All so right. You, can do the, you can do them right here. In, you can do it right here in, in your seat. You can just stand up, okay? So I'll hold your mic. Okay. Okay. So the first one. Yeah, you're good right there, you're good. Okay, the lawnmower. There you go, there you go. He's getting some help from the audience. The sprinkler. Uh, the running man. There we go, there we go, there we go. Um, the Macarena. Throwback, throwback, there we go. Almost, kind of, not really, but kind of, okay. YMCA. He needs music. Uh, C, C. No, that's backwards, buddy. Other, that way. There we go, there we go. You teach kindergarten, right? Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Just checking. The wave. Yeah, every, we, all, we all have to do it, the wave. There we go. Okay, there we go. Um, the Egyptian. I'm a, uh, something, there we go. Yep, walk like an Egyptian. Okay, last one. Oh, two more, actually. The robot. There, oh, whoa, 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 okay, okay. And last one, the cabbage patch. Yep, yeah, that's that one, that's that one. What's your favorite one? I think it's called the Charlie Brown. The Charlie Brown? Oh, go. Oh, he's adding his own. He's, do, you, do you just come back, do you want to just switch seats and you just, he goes, you need to do my favorite one. Give it up for Matt with his dance moves. Awesome, so, Matt, you're going to be talking about, yep, there you go, there you go. You're gonna be talking about demonstration notebooks and yes. how to use them as a visual tool. Tell us a little bit about what that is and what you're gonna be talking about in your session. So a demonstration notebook, I'm gonna show you. I actually, oh wait a minute. There you go, there you go. I have one here. You have this one, is mine. do you want me to hold it? Yeah, sure. Okay. And it's basically a tool for teachers to help kids with strategies. It's something that you are gonna make um, based on the needs of your kids. It's something that I, um, and I'll talk more about this in a second in the presentation. I've read about it in a professional book that was written for older grades, third grade and up, and I thought this would be something that I think kindergarten, first grade, second grade, smaller kids could really benefit from um, because we know so many of our kids are visual learners. Um, and that's what it is, basically, in like that much time. But I'll show you more. Awesome. So I'm going to let you head on over there right now. now. Without further ado, I want to turn things over to my friend Matt Halpern from Look at My Happy Rainbow. He's going to be talking about his demonstration notebooks and how to utilize them with your young learners. So take it away, Matt. OK, here we go. I'm just going to be very honest with you about something. I totally have ADD, which is why I'm a really good kindergarten teacher. And the lights and like everybody talking and the cameras everywhere is very distracting for me. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna power through it. Okay, so here we go. Demonstration notebooks. Oh, this is cool. I can sit over there. Here's here's my stuff. If you're interested, I'm trying really hard to like show stuff on social media, show what I'm doing with kids on social media. So if you're interested, there it all is. Can you hear me? Okay. A am I talking into this right? Okay. I don't. I can't tell if you can hear me or not. Um, uh oh. What happened? Oh wait. I went too far. All right. Where did this idea come from? I kind of gave you a little preview already with Chris. I read this book here, DI Literacy. It's a book for older kids. I think it's like third through eighth grade, um, and it's all about things that you can do. To, to do it yourself with literacy. But when I was reading it, again, for older kids, I'm thinking this would work, oh, what happened? This would work for my little guys as well. So how can I, how could I make it work? Now there's a quote up here that I have to say comes from one of the authors of the book that I really loved that says that what our kids need is us. They don't need Pinterest. 
or Instagram. I know, I love Instagram, but I have to say, they don't need it. What they need is you. And what, what that means to me is they need your expertise, your knowledge, your knowing them. Short little chord. Um, that's what they need. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Why isn't it working? So, oh, I'd love it. What's the research behind a demonstration notebook? Well, we all know that kids and, well, not even kids, people in general, if they have a visual tool to help them, it's gonna help them remember, especially if they're trying to think of something that's conceptual. If they have something visual, and I'm gonna be showing you lots of examples, like on all the slides, you can see there's an example right here of it. But basically, it's gonna help the learning that we're trying to do stick. So I don't know about you, but a lot of times I'll teach something to kids, and I'm like, did they even get that? Did it stick? I want my learning to stick. This is a tool um, that can help with that. Okay. So what exactly is it? It's basically a tool that you're gonna use to help teach strategies. Now, I have only used this with literacy, reading and writing, but I've heard of other people that use it for math and other things like that, but we're not gonna talk about math. We're gonna only talk about literacy right now. Um, but basically, this is gonna help scaffold these strategies so that kids can own them and do it without us. That's the whole goal, right? All right, let's see what we have here. So it's a place, well, it says what exactly is it? Well, really what it is is this. This is basically, can you see it? Here we go. It's a sketch notebook. It costs about $8.99, and that's it. It's blank. I can't, I can't hold it because I have all these things in my hand, but in the back where I haven't written anything, this is what it looks like. It's nothing, it's just a blank book. But the pages are nice and thick so that it'll last. Thanks, Chris. Oh, here we go, Vanna. <laughs> now this is my demonstration notebook. It's not very well organized because I'm not very well organized, but I will show you how you can organize it if you're one of those people that likes everything to be organized. Like Kim. Okay. So basically, you're gonna collect strategies. There's two ways you can do this. If you're like Kim, you can plan ahead. And a lot of teachers do this, and I would actually advise when you're new to something like this that you do wanna plan ahead. So what does that mean? You're gonna take your demonstration notebook and think about what do my kids need? What are some things that I need, strategies that maybe one, one student or a group of kids need, and you're gonna plan ahead. So it's kind of like a planning tool as well, but the other way you can do it is you can create pages in the moment. That's what I do because I'm, I don't plan ahead very well. So what I will do literally during my reading or writing workshop is I'll confer with some kids and I'll say, oh, okay, these three kids are really struggling with you know, attending to punctuation when they're reading. Let me go over to my desk and in about one minute, make a page, and then I'm gonna call you three over. I just decided that you all need help attending to punctuation. Um, call you three over and, and, and have that strategy group and I'll show you what that will look like in a minute. So they should be easy to make. Okay, listen, I actually know a lot of teachers that I've tried to do this work with who have not done it because they want their pages to be pretty and cute and perfect and they wanna use 400 different markers so that it's like the most beautiful page that you've ever seen in the world. That's not, let me tell you something, your kids don't care about that you care about that. So you have to let that go and just remember that this is supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be something hard that, that, that's gonna make your job harder. And it's an active tool, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Again, I know I made a whole slide about this because it's like if I had, if I had one nugget to, to give you, it's that this and really everything that you do should be easy. Work smarter, not harder, okay. Mm -hmm. My clicker's not working. So how do I start? So where I'm gonna start is I'm gonna think about an issue or a problem that maybe one student or many students are having and I'm gonna try to replicate that issue. So if it's a reading problem, then I might find a piece of mentor text that I, that I could use with kids. And if it's a writing problem, I might actually write like a kindergartner or a first grader and try to replicate the issue. After I replicate it, then I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna talk about that next. So, oh, this is a little tip that I have. So when I make my pages, and I think this one might be in there, 
flaps are really fun if you don't know how to make a flap. Basically, what I did here was I took a piece of student work and I made a photocopy of it and then I pasted the photocopy on top and I just glued right at the top so that it became like a flap that would flap up. So here was the problem. We were talking about um, labeling our pictures to give more information. So in the writing, I won't read the whole thing to you, but basically they were writing about krill. So I was like, oh, we could label the krill. So when you flip up the flap, you see the label. I know, it doesn't seem that exciting to you, but to a five-year-old, it's wicked exciting. <laughs> wicked, I'm from Maine, by the way, so sometimes I say wicked. Um, okay, when am I gonna do this? Well, there's lots of different times you can do it. At your PLCs, it's a great time to sit with other teachers and talk about kids and say, oh, I have kids that have that problem too. What page did you make? Or let's make a page together and kind of do some uh, collaborating like that. You can do it at your planning time. If you have common planning time, you can do it by yourself. You can take it home over the weekend. You can take it to the beach. You can take it to the pool here in Vegas. Or you can do it like me in the moment. Once you get good at it, you can just kind of whip off a page in a minute. And I'll show you some examples of quick pages so you can see what I'm talking about. So then how does this work with kids? So now that I've decided these three friends, remember them over here, they're not attending the punctuation. I've made my page and I call them over, what am I gonna do? First I'm gonna say, watch me. And I'm gonna show them how to attend to punctuation. That's, oh that's on a different page. But anyway, I'll show them, that's kind of like what I've written on the page. Then I have a little piece of mentor text so that we can try it together. And then after we try it together, then I'm gonna ask them to do it alone. So I'm gonna say to you three, watch me, I'm gonna do it. Now let's try it together. All four of us are gonna do it together. Then I'm gonna kind of move you a little bit so that you're not right on top of each other. And I'm gonna have, I can't see your name because you're covering it. Suzanne, let's try it while you two are reading independently. Once I see Suzanne can do it, off you go. And next, uh, Natalie. And then Natalie, you see how that's gonna work? So the, the, the format is the same. Hey, Yolanda, how are you? She was in my session earlier. Um, do you know her? Oh my God, we love Yolanda. Come on up here, Yolanda, come on. Come on, give, give Yolanda a round of applause. Come on, she's feeling nervous. Wait, how do you know Yolanda, Chris? Oh my gosh. Oh, yo, Adam's here too. It's like a party. Okay, sorry, all right. I told you, ADD, ADD. There's like all people, people that I, okay. Um, Okay, I talked about that. Okay, here's a page that, this is not me, this is a first grade teacher that I worked with last year. Oh, I didn't tell you, I was a literacy coach, but I, I, that wasn't really my thing, so now I'm going back to the classroom. Kindergarten, woohoo! But anyway, um, this is a page that a first grade teacher made. Now look, I don't know if you can see it really well, but if not, you can look on the video after. She took one marker, one color, and made this page in like a minute so that she could use it with kids. So this wasn't about her, you know, making a beautiful picture. I mean, that is not like, you know, the best looking most, that's not what it's about. So she made a simple page quickly and it was an anchor for her. So when she called those kids over, she knew what she was teaching and the kids also had a visual aid. Um, next you're gonna see, oh, how do you organize your book? Okay, if you're me, then you don't even organize it. You just like have your pages. But like, I know most teachers are really organized. So there's different ways you can do that. Some teachers I know have organized it by subject. So like they put all their reading pages together and all their writing pages together. Some teachers who really get into it, where's my book? I don't even know, Chris has it, have different books. So like, this is my reading book. And then I have a totally different book that's for writing. You can do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy. Um, you can organize it by strategy. So I'm gonna put all my pages about fluency, all my pages about comprehension. Whatever works for you. Um, and then, oh, this is, a, this is one I'm not gonna get too much into right now because we don't have a lot of time. But I also advise you to have a section for teacher tools. So there are pages. So I'm gonna do a little plug. Tomorrow, I'm actually doing like a full session about this where I have videos, where I show you me working with kids, but like we don't have time for that right now. But there's a section in my book for teacher tools. So they're pages for me. They're not for the kids. So like I have a page um, where I was trying to do less talking, imagine that, when I'm working with kids. So 
that, that was a page for me. It wasn't a page for kids. So you might have a section for that. So how do you get started? I would recommend that you start by planning the pages ahead of time. You don't want to start like trying to make pages right in the moment. So you're going to plan ahead of time. Think about a student or a group of students and an issue that they are having, and then plan and create a few pages. You want to use resources. You don't, this isn't like you're coming up, you don't have to come up with things out of thin air. So resources. Think about if you have a curriculum that you're required to use, who has a curriculum? Anyone? A lot of not, yep. Go there and see like, there's probably stuff in there that, that you can use to create some pages. The other thing, if you don't know these two books, and like I don't know her personally, Jennifer Saravello. Does everybody know Jennifer Saravello? If you don't know Jennifer Saravello and you teach reading or writing, you need to know Jennifer Saravello. Um, anyway, she wrote these, do you know these books? They're brilliant. They're really fat books. They're like, I don't know, 400 pages, big fat books filled with strategies that you could go into your demonstration notebook. Um, so this is the last thing I'm going to, we're almost finished. I don't know how much time I've been talking, but we're almost done. Um, this is my page. I think actually Chris showed it that I made. So I was working with this little guy and he was a first grader. His name was Brogan and he was having a lot of trouble with retelling in first grade. So I'm, I found this strategy in their reading strategies book. I quickly made up my page. I called him over. We, he took, we took one of his books and I said, Brogan, watch me do this. And so using this, I said, I'm going to read a page. And then I took my hand. I'm going to cover it. And then I'm going to think, what happened on that page? And then I'm going to retell it. And I did it. Then we flipped the page. I said, now let's do it together. So we did a little shared reading. We read the page together. We both put our hand on top of the page. And then we both, we, I did, we did a little thinking aloud, and then we both retold it together. Finally, another page, I'm like, Brogan, now I want you to try it by yourself. And he did. And then, and this is where the magic happens. Then, I said to him, I said, so was this page helpful to you? Yes, Mr. Halpern, it, it was so helpful. I said, wouldn't it be cool if you had a tool that you could take back to your seat to help you? because you can't have my book, I need it. So I gave him a sticky note and a pen and he made his own. So this little boy took the sticky note and it was like gold to him, gold. It went in his book bin and every time he read, that sticky note came out and he put it right next to himself and I looked over and there he was, reading and thinking and retelling and it was awesome. Now I'll tell you, with little, little pre-KK, this is gonna take a long time. So the other thing you can do is you could make them ahead of time. I made a tool for you and just give it to them. But I'll tell you, if you kids can do this, what I did while he was making the tool was I got up and walked around and did some other conferences. I wasn't just sitting there watching him. Um, and I think I just have a couple more examples to show you kind of what it can look like. Again, if you come to my full session, I'm gonna talk about this for an hour, 15 minutes. We're gonna go into it a lot more, and actually have you make a page, which I've never done anything like that, Kim adds it. I've never had people make anything in any of my sessions. So I'm going to do it. And that's the end, pretty much. So I'm just going to say, keep in touch. If you saw something, if you make one, if you make a demonstration notebook, I would love to see it. So here are some places that you can share it. And um, thanks. Halpern. I'm just a little disappointed that nobody danced with me. Uh,